Hi, I'm Mitra, author of Medina Regalia LVT for Companion Animal Emergency Care and Pain Management class at Tarleton State University. So what is pyometra? Pyometra is a bacterial infection in the uterus associated directly with the estrus cycle and generally develops within three months after estrus. During proestrus and estrus, the cervix is open, allowing for normal vaginal flora and possible per perineal or fecal bacteria to ascend into the uterus. Following the estrus phase, the cervix closes, essentially locking in any bacteria or sperm, allowing for infection to set in if the animal lacks the ability to overcome the bacteria. During estrus, the release of progesterone from the ovaries slows uterine contractions and also increases glandular secretions. This then promotes the development of the mucus lining of the uterus. Since progesterone is the key trigger, the development of cystic endometrial hyperplasia can occur. This creates an environment that is very suitable for bacterial growth. In most pyometra cases, E. coli is the most isolated organism that is found. Let's first look at the normal reproductive anatomy of the canine and the feline. Here we see a picture of a portion of the reproductive tract of a female dog on the left and the feline on the right. The paired ovaries are the female gonads. They contain the oocytes and are responsible for much of the dog's reproductive hormone production. The oviducts are small ducts that transport the oocytes from the ovary to the uterus. The uterine horns join and form the uterine body anterior to the cervix. And the cervix is a structure consisting of dense connective tissue that connects the uterus to the vagina. The vagina is the female copulatory organ that opens at the external genitalia or vulva. And, that's a, and the mesometrium is the larger part of the support system throughout the abdominal cavity. The mesometrium is specifically the part that supports the uterus. The estrus cycle in dog varies tremendously depending on the breed as well as the size of the animal. The estrus cycle may begin as early as six months old in some small breeds and as late as 18 months in some of the larger breeds. The duration of the estrus cycle in one particular dog is fairly consistent over time, but again, there's a great deal of variability among individuals and among breeds. To cycle once every seven months is a rough average among dogs, but some breeds tend to cycle once every four months, for example, our German Shepherds, while others, like the Basenji, tend to cycle only once every 12 months. So let's look at the estrus cycle a little more in depth. The proestrus stage is the very first dog heat cycle. This stage can last anywhere from three to 17 days, but many dogs experience about nine days in proestrus. The first sign of this stage is swelling of the vulva. This is the one of the best ways to spot the beginning of a dog's heat cycle. During this stage, you may notice personality change, appetite changes, swelling of the vulva, as well as tail tucking. During the estrus stage, this will last from three to 21 days, but typically nine days on average. This is the time the dog is fertile, her actual heat, and where her ovaries begin to release eggs for fertilization. During the stage, the female dog will be willing to accept male company. She will switch her tail to the side and may try to be outside more often than normal. She is following her instinct to breed. During this period, symptoms include a lightened discharge, softening of the vulva, and she's very accepting of males. As the diestrous stage takes over, the fertile part of her heat cycle comes to an end. This stage can last from 60 to 90 days, and at this point, the dog is no longer fertile. If the dog has been impregnated, the diestrous stage lasts until the end of the estrus, until the birth of the puppies, which is around 60 days, depending on the breed. Signs of diestrous include gradual disappearance of vulvar swelling and not accepting males. The final stage is anestrous. This is known as the resting stage. This is the longest phase of the dog's heat cycle, which can last anywhere from 100 to 150 days. And at the end of the entire heat cycle, it starts all again. There are two types of pyometra, open and closed. In open pyometra, the cervix is open, and in closed, the cervix is closed. This last type, closed, 
pyometra may make diagnosis more difficult to observe, so clients may not notice any clinical manifestations, therefore delaying treatment. Any delay in treatment for these animals can lead to sepsis as the uterus continues to fill with infection. This can lead to perforation into the peritoneal cavity and have devastating results. Clinical signs and presenting complaints. Patients often have a purulent discharge and are often lethargic. They have polydipsia and polyuria, which is usually secondary to nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. They may have a decreased appetite, and they may have some GI signs, such as vomiting and diarrhea. In any absence of purulent vaginal discharge, these varied signs could indicate several illnesses. For guest cases, may also show hypovolemic or septic shock. This disease typically occurs in middle-aged intact females. While it can occur at any age, we see increased cases as the animal ages and is not spayed. It is also important to note that though we most commonly see unaltered female dogs with this disease, we can also see it in a variety of other species as well, including humans, cattle, cats, horses, ferrets, rats, guinea pigs, and more. So what tests will we need to run to help diagnose our patients? We must realize first that each patient is unique, and so tests may vary from patient to patient. But generally speaking, most veterinarians are going to ask for a complete blood count, in which we may see some marked neutrophilic glucocytosis with left shift. Non-generative anemia is also common, as is mild thrombocytopenia. Patients that are in septic shock may have evidence of neutropenia with toxic neutrophils. We may also be asked to run a chemistry panel to assess their liver and kidney function. In these cases, we may see some elevated blood urea, nitrogen, and creatinine levels due to the patient's dehydration. If hypoxia is present, it, this will also increase our patient's liver enzymes. Your doctor also may ask for your analysis, and this will just give us a value to display any concurrent infections that may be going on. It should also be noted that cystocentesis is often avoided in these patients and should be performed carefully if done under an ultrasound guidance to avoid accidental penetration into the exudate-filled uterus. We can also do advanced imaging. Abdominal radiographs in a closed pyometra will often reveal a soft tubular structure in the caudal to mid-abdomen consistent with a fluid-filled uterus as indicated in the bottom picture. Abdominal ultrasounds will also reveal a large fluid-filled uterus and what looks often like a classic upside-down Mickey Mouse hat. Will our images always be obvious? In short, not always. In open pyometra, much of the fluid may be draining already, making diagnosis much more challenging. In case of, cases of pyometra that have progressed to septic peritonitis, we will notice a generalized loss of seroso detail as evidenced in the abdominal radiographs. This is suggesting that they have peritoneal effusion. In addition, doing an abdominal ultrasound can also be utilized to identify free abdominal fluid in the presence of which we should promptly do an abdominocentesis and carefully analyze that analysis and run a careful analysis of the fluid for intercellular bacteria. So our veterinarians is going, are going to be placing their diagnosis upon our patient's clinical signs, our ability to obtain a full patient history and determine what point of the estrous cycle that they're in as well as any ultrasound or any other diagnostic tools that have been run. Initial treatments for these patients include aggressive fluid resuscitation with balanced crystalloids to correct their dehydration, restore their blood pressure, and correct any acid base or electrolyte de derangements. They should also receive IV antibiotic therapy, starting with specific coverage extending to E. coli. Some possible treatments that your patients may, may obtain are oxygen therapy if they are hypoxic, analge analgesia to maintain any kind of pain, PRBC and plasma transfusions if they have lost any blood due to the infection. Our preferred treatment for these patients, regardless of open or closed pyometra diagnosis, is general anesthesia 
and an abdominal exploratory with surgical removal of the uterus via ovario hysterectomy as soon as our patients are stable enough. This would be the treatment of choice. Culture and sensitivity of the uterine exudate should always be obtained during surgery and antibiotics can be altered and de-escalated later as needed when the culture and sensitivity results are available. After surgical intervention, patients generally require several days of hospitalization and treatment, which is similar to that of sepsis or septic peritonitis. Some patients with septic peritonitis may have a closed suction drain placed during surgery, and in some situations, it may be necessary to maintain the patient with an open abdomen, which will increase the duration of their hospital stay and require daily anesthesia to flush the abdomen, change bandages, and finally close the abdomen. In cases of animals that are older than six years of age, have been displaying a closed cervix and are critically ill and in shock or sepsis, have a very grave prognosis. Is there prevention for this? The best and the only prevention for pyometra is to have your dog spayed. Spaying, whether by removing the uterus and ovaries or just the ovaries, removes removes the hormonal stimulation that causes both heat cycles and the uterine changes that allow pyometra to occur. We should be educating our clients to the possible medical implications that can occur when they leave their animals unaltered. References used for further reading. Image references.